Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Kane, and to Ranking Member Brasso, thank you all for help having this hearing. And to Ms. Bennett, I appreciate your willingness to step up and serve our country again after your service at the Voice of America. And welcome to your family, including uh, your husband, Don Graham, who I see back yeah. behind you somewhere lurking. Um, I, I want to talk a little about my concern about what's happened to the uh, U.S. Agency for Global Media. Without having leadership in place, it's it's been kind of adrift. It's my sense that the staff has had a, a, some morale challenges and uh, that stable leadership is really needed right now. I, I think you probably know better than most, having been director of the Voice of America, the importance of uh, USAGM's uh, reliability and consistency in terms of uh, the foreign audience that, that trusts them and um, that therefore sets them apart from other news sources. So my question to you is if confirmed, it would be up to you to reestablish that trust. Uh, and by the way, with Congress and the American people as well, but certainly the foreign audiences. What are your plans and how would you empower the networks to protect freedom and democracy in countries that are increasingly, as we've heard today, under threat from Russia, from China, from other authoritarian regimes? Thank you, Senator. And I'm glad you used the word trust because one of the hallmarks of my leadership throughout my career has been the fact that I want to cultivate trust with everyone that our news organization touches, with the staff, with its stakeholders, with its audiences. Trust is one of the most important things. Without it, you can't do anything going forward. So going in and reestablishing the trust inside USAGM, I hope will go a long way towards helping improve the morale there because I saw that even under the most difficult circumstances, even when the morale was the lowest, no one ever, ever, ever abandoned their faith in the mission or their passion for the mission. And so helping people get the tools and the processes and the support that they need to do that mission, I think will go a long way towards restoring trust and restoring uh, a morale that is essential to operating effectively. Well, thank you, Ms. Ben. I think you have your, you'll have your hands full. And uh, again, with your background, I think you'll come in with some credibility uh, with the other journalists there. And I hope that we can, at this critical time, you know, have a very effective message countering the disinformation and propaganda that's increasing out there uh, in every format, particularly online. Uh, I want to ask you a specific question, if I could, um, with regard to North Korea, along with Senator Brown and Senator Coons and others, I wrote and introduced what's called the Otto Warmbier countering North Korea Censorship and Surveillance Act. It passed uh, this committee actually in October, and we are hoping to get a vote on the floor soon. It seeks to combat the North Korea regime's repressive information environment, which is flooded entirely with regime-sponsored propaganda, as you know, and it actually censors outside news. Um, what's your understanding of Radio Free Asia's and uh, Voice of America's programming to the North Korean audiences? Senator, thank you. Thank you very much. And my, un my understanding, based on my time there, is that there is substantial programming that helps the people in North Korea see and understand what's happening in a truthful way that they can't access any other way, and also gives them a look at what life is like in other parts of the world, that, uh, uh, an insight that they're largely um, forbidden to have. And I think I would like to say that even right now, there is a surprising audience inside North Korea for truthful news and information. I've been lucky enough to read some reports that really surprised even me about the extent to which Voice of America and Radio Free Asia's uh, content is available. And I wonder if, if I might be um, permitted, I carried, I was so struck by this that I carried oh. this statement with me. I had it laminated, I put it in my purse, carried it with me, and read it to anyone who would listen. It's about North Korea. And it's a statement that says, my name is Tai Yong Ho. I am the former Deputy Ambassador of North Korea to the United Kingdom. And today I would like to say that the Voice of America has been playing a very important role to bring back the human rights to every citizen of the world. And so far, VOA has played a very important role to push the world to a better world. And when I was in North Korea as a diplomat in the foreign ministry, I read every morning and afternoon the materials. We called them radio reference materials of VOA. And the North Korean regime also pays great attention to the context of VOA. 
So I think it's very important that VOA should strengthen that activity and also its contents so that one day I hope VOA is remembered by the North Korean people as kind of, you know, the main player who contributed a lot for the reunification of the Korean Peninsula. Now, he was speaking on VOA broadcast, therefore the emphasis on VOA, but Radio for Asia also has the same kind of impact inside North Korea, and I think it's one that we can build on and, ex and accentuate going forward. Great. Well, th thank you very much. Um, we also understand that there is some damage to some of the antennas that have been used in the past uh, to be able to broadcast into North Korea, and there's a need to repair those antennas. So uh, should you be confirmed, we'd love to work with you on that. Um, and also the Open Technology Fund um, has some tools to be able to circumvent some of the censorship. And uh, I want to be sure that you are um, working with them as, as well, who could benefit from our legislation. Do you have any, any exposure to that group, to the Open Technology Fund? Yes, Senator, I, I do. I have met with and talked to the people on the Open Technology Fund. I have nothing but respect and admiration and, frankly, great excitement about the possibility of going there, working with them, and helping develop those essential tools. So, yes, Senator, and I will welcome discussions and support from anyone in helping achieve that mission. Great. Uh, what's your assessment of um, RFE and, and Radio Liberty's uh, coverage of the war in Ukraine? Senator, I think that the entire U.S. Agency for Global Media are doing just an extraordinary job of covering that uh, conflict and providing useful information to the people there and also to the people around the world. It's As we mentioned earlier, it's very, very important to make sure that the rest of the world also knows this. And I think that there is so much more that can be done to build on the work that is being done right now to make sure that more people see it, more people hear it. A bigger audience around the world gets that news and information. I really look forward to working to build on the wonderful work that is being done currently and make it even more available. Do you think that Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty should recommence its physical operations in Russia? Has that been an issue in terms of, uh, as Senator Barrasso asked, uh, allowing the Russian people to get the facts as to what's really going on in Ukraine? Senator, I apologize, but I'm not very familiar with that, that particular issue right at the moment, but I look forward to looking into it and getting back to you if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Well, that would, that, that would be great. Um, I think uh, broadcasting news to to our Russian audience is really important right now. And uh, that's something to think about is whether we should try to recommence our physical operations there. Um, so thank you very much for uh, your testimony today. And uh, again, your willingness to, to step up and, and be involved in uh, another leadership role, helping to spread uh, truth and, and frankly, uh, allowing people around the world to know, you know what America is really up to, which is, you know, we are, involved in liberating people and helping people and um, in Ukraine trying to avoid uh, atrocities from occurring uh, from Russia on, thanks to an unjustified, illegal, unwarranted invasion of that country. And, and um, so and my hope is that you uh, will be able to help to communicate that message. And that is such a critical message right now, particularly again with all the disinformation and propaganda out there, particularly on social media. So. Thank you and uh, best of luck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.